Welcome to this video on how to calculate RSI divergence using Excel. This is Mark from tradeinform.com. In this video, I am going to show you how you can quickly calculate the RSI divergence. On the chart on the screen, we can see what an RSI divergence looks like. And I'm looking at a bullish divergence. And we can see here that price is making a lower low. And I'm measuring this low by the close because RSI is calculated using the closing price. And we can see if you look lower down, the RSI is failing to make a new low. So we have a divergence when price makes a new low, but the momentum indicator, in this case the RSI, fails to make a new low. On the screen at the moment is a spreadsheet and the first thing that you need is the RSI calculations. Now I've, I've recorded a previous video on this and there is a link on the screen and below this video if you want to watch that video. If you don't want to calculate it yourself, I also have a spreadsheet that has got 21 different technical indicators and there's also a link for that on the screen and down below the video. So, two ways to get the RSI into your spreadsheet. So we have the RSI calculations in the spreadsheet and we're going to start off the logic for the RSI divergence. Now the first thing we do when we're starting off a logical function in Excel is we type in equals if and we're using and to show that we're using multiple conditions. So we're looking here for the price to hit a new low. So I'm going to take the previous price and I'm going to say it has to be lower than the min, which stands for the minimum or lowest value of the previous 20 closes. I'm going to put a comma in and I'm going to say that this previous value must also be lower than the current value. And I'll explain why in a moment I'm using the previous value. So we're just going to put in the text divergence. Now, in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the number one. And if we don't do that, we'll do nothing. And we just enter that. Now, in the next column, I'm going to put in the RSI divergence. And we start that off in exactly the same way, equals if and. Previous RSI value is greater than the min the previous value. So why are we saying this one should be greater than? Well, this is when we want the divergence because we don't want the RSI to also be hitting a new low. That value must be again lower than the current value. And I'm also going to add in a separate condition. I'm going to say that this lowest value must be lower than a fixed value. And I've set it here as 30. So we're going to say we want it to be a under overbought area, sorry, an oversold area. So I put equals this value and then we press F4 to make that a fixed reference cell. We close that bracket. I'm going to put one in there and another comma and close. Okay, so we have two condition, set of conditions here. And we're going to finish it off by saying equals if and this value equals 1 and this value equals 1. Then put in the text divergence. And if not, we'll make it blank. Okay, so that's all it takes to calculate this version of the RSI divergence. Just double click in the bottom right hand corner like that and we can scroll down and we're starting to see some new lows here and I've used conditional formatting to highlight our new lows and we scroll down far enough we can see a few RSI effectively it's a low but it's not a new low we see we're not got any exactly the same but we do here so we have one and one this means that we have a bullish divergence 
I'm going to go over how to calculate a bearish divergence. They're not as common, um, although they are as common, but they're not as commonly used as a bullish divergence. But let's do it anyway. So equals if and we're going to use exactly the same principle. Previous value is this time greater than the max, which of course stands for maximum or highest value of the previous 20 values close that bracket put in a comma and this previous value must also be greater than the current value close the brackets put in a one another comma and enter rsi go through this again equals if and previous rsi value is lower than the max of the previous 20 RSI values and previous value is greater than the current value and one more we're going to say that this greatest value must also be greater than 70 which again is the commonly thought of overbought area for the RSI and we're going to close that put in a comma and we're going to say one and close that and enter. And we can finish this off very easily by saying if that equals one and that simultaneously equals one, close the bracket, put in a comma, and we'll put in the text divergence. If not, leave it blank. Once again, we're going to highlight these three cells double click and we're going to copy it down now let's have a look we have a price high there price high there and if we scroll down further we're going to hopefully see some there we go we have an rsi high but not high which means we have a divergence now why have i used the previous value because let's go back to the chart that we can see now on the screen because we want to create a bit of a fractal we want to have some proof that we're on the right track so I'm actually taking the current value as the day following or the bar following the divergence because we want to see a higher close in the case of a bullish divergence or a lower close in the case of a bearish divergence now this is a way of getting some evidence and proof that a divergence is in place. Now, if I go back to the spreadsheet, this spreadsheet that I'm demonstrating it in here, got some historical data, Euro USD on the daily time frame, this is a trade informed backtest spreadsheet. And in a future video, I'm going to show you the results of the tests that I've done using the RSI bullish and bearish divergence. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button if you did. If you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about trading the financial markets, especially about backtesting your strategies, getting more winning trades, please go to tradeinformed.com. <laughs>